Ok, Héctor, Peter, Héctor, Peter, Juanito, Jorge. Hi, teacher. Oh, finally, man. <laughs> finally, we, I miss your voice. Ok, great. Chicos, una vez más, no se casen solo mm. con la gramática. No porque te estoy escribiendo ejemplos aquí que inician con place expressions. Todas las oraciones tienen que ser así. No. Te pongo esas oraciones para que identifiques cómo es la forma. Pero si obtienes una oración distinta o normal, lo único que tienes que checar, sujeto y verbo. Hemos estado checando eso desde el inicio. ¿Sí? Y yo se los dije, no me canso de explicarles y decirles sujeto y verbo, subject and a verb, subject and a verb. Porque esa es la base ahorita. Si no identificas eso, ahora que venga la segunda parte... Menos vas a identificar lo, lo, lo que sigue. Por eso insisto, 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 insisto. Sujeto y verbo. La place expression no es el problema. Nunca va a ser el problema. El problema es la forma. Solamente tenemos dos formas. Ya te lo expliqué y te lo vuelvo a poner aquí. No sé si estés tomando notas. Para mí sería genial que tomaras notas. ¿Ok? Number one. Place, expression, verb, and a subject. Number two, place, expression, comma, subject, and verb. Esas son las dos únicas formas, okay, that you have to learn. In the locker are the books. In the locker, comma, they are the books. Esa, esas son las dos únicas formas, right? In case that you have a sentence with a place expression. If you have a sentence like this, the books you are looking for are in the locker. The books you are looking for Ay, me comí la letra. The books you are looking for are in the locker. Ya también te dije, debes de aprender a leer separation. 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 Ahí está la separación y ahí tienes el sujeto y el verbo. All right, hello. Subject, aprende a leer separado. También te he estado, insiste, insiste, insiste. Si no aprendes a leer separado en el siguiente curso, vas a tener más y más lagunas. Y ese no es mi objetivo. Mi objetivo es que aprendas a leer separado. ¿Ok? The books you are looking for are in the locker. Está bien. Una oración normal, dos oraciones with place expressions. Period. Subject and a verb. ¿Qué es lo que más me interesa? Subject and a verb. Subject and a verb. Okay, guys. 
Well, I don't know. Take an image with your cell phone and later you, si no los quieres escribir, whatever the reason is, te le sacas impresión. I don't know. But the point is that you have this, these structures on a notebook. No confío mucho en, in my mind. Pero si no retengo la información, la escribo. Teacher. Okay. Great. Teacher. Yes, tell me, tell me, César. Pero, por ejemplo, en esas oraciones que están este, más largas, ya mm -hmm. no se sigue la, ninguna de las dos estructuras de arriba. No. Es, por eso, es por eso que en la otra, mm -hmm. es, pues tuvimos un poquito así como que de duda y no sabíamos si estaba bien o estaba mal porque no seguía eh, pues ninguna de esas dos estructuras. Ajá. Sí, no. Entonces, ¿cómo sabemos? Exacto. Yo te enseño una estructura. Estas son, siempre te pongo así, son dos formas o una, dos o tres, dependiendo. Ajá. ¿Sí? Si esta estructura está, es decir, en esta en específico, que inicia con una place expression, ah, entonces ya debes de saber qué es la uno o la dos. Sí. Si no inicia con place expression, nada más tienes que buscar el sujeto y el verbo. Ah, entonces, mientras cumpla con los sujetos y verbos completos, ya sea un par, dos pares o los que vengan, uh -huh. eh, está correcta. Está correcta, exactly. Ah, ok. Esto es, es, this, is the, this is the point of the TOEFL. Sujeto y verbo. ¿Por qué insiste mucho eh, eh, TOEFL en subject and a verb? Porque en español no los comemos. ¿Sí? Decimos, este, comí tortas ayer. Y ya lleva implícito el yo. En inglés no. En inglés debes de decir, I ate tortas yesterday. Esa sería la bonita forma si habláramos nosotros, hablásemos, es la correcta palabra, hablásemos nosotros así. Yo comí pero me como los sujetos. Por eso es de que el español es, lo destruimos. Yo, yo me considero una persona que habla mal el español, pero hablo bien el inglés. Sí, los escucho a ustedes y los entiendo. Bien. Pero tu español está mal. Porque no seguimos estas reglas. Okay. Y esto no es un inglés, te lo he repetido como más de 30 veces. Esto no es un inglés, no es un inglés formal. Este es el inglés informal. Pero es la forma correcta de hablar. Ok. Sale, chicos. This is the point. Ok, ya lo dijo claramente Giovanni. Yes. The number one or the number two. These are the forms. If I have another option, normal, yes, you check only subject and a verb Both. and period. Correct, guys? Yes, teacher. Yes, great. Y hablen, así como Giovanni. A ver, a mí me pasó esto, ¿ok? Ya saben que yo tengo el tiempo for, for you to explain. Pero si no me preguntan, yo doy por hecho que, ah, pues ya lo entendiste. Pues, great for you. Ok, sale, vámonos a la página 133. Eh, Jorge, do you have a book? Yes, I have. Thank you, man. And the next time, say, yes, I do. Because my question is, do you have a book? Ok, great. Page 133. In the middle of the book, you have one example. On the second level of the parking lot, you have one space. Complete the space with A, B, C, or D.
the example begins with a place expression? Yes or no? Yes. Teacher. Yes. Again, what page? One, three, three. Okay. 133. Thanks. You're welcome. Exactly. Now check. Is the number one or the number two? It is the number one or the number, number two? One. Number one. Number one. So you have the place expression. You need a verb and a subject. Mm. The option is D. You say B of book or D of dinosaur? Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Exactly. On the second floor of the parking lot are verb, some empty stalls, subject. Correct? Yes? Yes. Excellent. Let's go to the page one, three, four. One hundred, three, four. Capish? Okay, the sentence number one and the sentence number two is always the example. In front of the house is my place expression. Do I have a comma? No. So it's the example number one. I need a verb. Where some giant trees. Where is my subject? Giant trees. Sorry. Where is my verb? Where is my verb? Some giant trees. My subject. Example number two. There. A big house is on the corner. Is incorrect. There is a subject. A is a verb? No. A is not a verb. I need a verb. Is. But I have a separation. No, I need. There is a big house on the corner. No separation here. Subject and a verb. Remember. Sometimes are together. When you have different structures. This structure is incorrect. Okay. Well, okay, for, for Jorge, that is the time number one with this kind of exercises, Jorge. Identify sentences three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, they are correct or incorrect. Okay, Jorge? Okay. Okay. Fast, resolve, correct or incorrect? One, two, three.
incorrecta por When finished, let me know, guys. I finish. Okay, Giovanni. Just give me one moment for the rest. I finished too. Okay. Okay, guys. I think most of you have already finished. 
Ok, teacher. Ok. All right, so let's start. Giovanni, the number three for you is? It's correct. It's correct, exactly. In the cave is your place expression. In was a ah, was is my verb a ah, is my subject in singular singular in singular vast treasure of gems and jewels perfect brenda number four it's incorrect excellent to the north the stream is to the north is my place expression, but I don't have a comma. And I have a subject, the stream is verb incorrect. Only for the comma, only for the comma. Yes, incredible. Hector, number five. Is correct. It is correct, exactly. Around the corner, place, are, verb, the offices, subject, that, connector, you are trying to find, subject and a verb. Right here, Giovanni and the rest, check. You have a connector, that. Ya viste los conectores. Ya vieron eso. You are subject and a verb. Es todo lo que tienes que checar right now. Subject and a verb. Okay. Eh, I go with Jorge. Jorge, number six. Is correct. It's correct, exactly. At the Italian restaurant, place. Was verb. The food. Subject, singular and singular. Perfect. Peter, number seven. Problems, Peter, with the microphone. Yes, Juanito, seven. Yeah. It's incorrect. Excellent. It is incorrect. Nowhere in the world, place expression, no comma, no comma. farmers, subject. No, I need a comma. Comma, farmers can grow, subject and a verb. Eight. Giovanni, number eight. It's, it's incorrect. It's incorrect, exactly. In the backyard, the two trees are in the backyard is my place. No comma. I need a comma. In the backyard, comma, the two trees are subject and a verb. No comma is incorrect. Brenda, number nine. nine. It's correct. It's correct, exactly. Around the recreation hall and down the pot is my place expression. Verb, R. Subject, the tense. Where, connector. We, subject, will be a staging verb. Mm, you see right now? Yes, we have more elements. Ya te están combinando todo. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the number 10, Jorge. The number 
It's incorrect. It's incorrect, exactly. In the apartment next to mine. Ah, no, espérame, espérame. But right there is a coma. It's correct, teacher. It's correct. Right there is a coma. A family subject was a verb that had a lot of pet. It's a comma, subject and a verb, a family was that had a lot of pets. Okay? Te voy a mandar una foto. Permíteme. ¿Ya la recibiste? Eso es lo que tú debes de hacer con tu libro. Obviamente que está la letra muy chiquita ahí, pero es lo que tienes que hacer. Identificar parte por parte y rápido. Eso lo haces rapidísimo. Bueno, ahorita te estás tomando el tiempo. ¿Sí? Pero si aprendes a hacer eso, con el tiempo se te va haciendo un hábito, identificas más rápido. ¿Sí? Y ve, yo tengo ahí como flechitas. Ah, es que esto va acá y esto va allá. ¿Sí? Tengo ahí por qué está mal. Es lo único que quiero que me digas. Is incorrect. For example, the number seven. Is incorrect. Why? Yes. Eh, no coma. Yes. And first is the subject and the verb. Ya. Yeah. Boom. Pero eso es lo que debes tú de hacer con tu libro. Ok. Para eso te lo dieron. To do all the things that you need to solve effectively every time. Ok. Great. Vámonos con la otra. All right. Ok. Um, this is my question, students. Tell me some negative words. Negative words. Tell me negatives. How do you say no? Tell me some negatives. Come on, whatever in your mind. Never. Never, okay, another. Another. Can yes, but which one? Tell me, tell me that one. What is that one? Tower. Tower? No, tower is not a negative word. Negative, negatives. Tell nowhere. Me negatives. Ah, nowhere, okay. Uh -huh. Tell me another one. Nobody. Nobody. Uh -huh. Another one. Negatives, negative words. In a sentence, how do you say no in a sentence? Nothing. Nothing. Uh huh. Another. Not. Not. Uh huh. Another one. Uh, no. Okay. Check the separation. I have never not. Yes, and I have nowhere and nothing. Okay, well, these words are, yes, are negatives, but no, I, I don't want these words uh, today. No, I don't want these words today. I want negative words, negative words. Never, hardly, 
de typical no o traditional no. Yes. Eh, only. Scarcely. Eh, rarely. Need, neither. Nor. Barely. I need one more, one more. Uh, ah, and seldom. All of these words, all of these words are considered negatives. Negatives. I mean, in other courses, some, some students tell me, isn't, aren't, don't, doesn't, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly, and I, and I accept. But I say, no, these are auxiliaries and verbs. No, I say words. How, teacher? Ah, pues these words, never, not, hardly, no, only, scarcely, rarely, neither, nor, barely, and seldom. These words are negatives. Negatives. Okay? Give me a second, guys. Okay, ready guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so all of these are the negative words. Correcto? Okay. The form is only one in this case. Negative word. Verb. And a subject. For example, Never on Mondays is Bips open. Never on Mondays is Bips open. Hardly ever where students at the school. Hardly ever where students at the school. Seldom in my life 
have I have I fail an exam. Okay. Seldom in my life have I failed an exam. All right. So what is happening here? All of these are negative words. After the negative word, I need a verb. And after the verb, I need a subject. Bips, students, I. Okay, it's with negative words. Every time that you have these negative words, beginning, comenzando, beginning, you need a verb and you need a subject. In case that the sentence is not with a negative, don't apply. Bips never open on Mondays. This sentence is correct. Students hardly ever wear at the school. This is a normal sentence and it's okay. I have <coughs> seldom fail an exam in my life. The two forms are correct, except when you have a negative word at the beginning. Okay, guys, comprende? Yes. Yes. Ok, rapidísimo, porque me queda un minuto. Ahí en la página 135 tienen la forma. La 136 es la que deben de resolver para mañana as homework. 135 okay. y 136 as homework. Chequense ahí los ejemplos. Memorícense de negative words. Yes, ahí tienen en la 135.